All right, Shabbos, say good morning. Let us begin. So we are picking up Emir Tzashem in the new Osin Sivkas HaSadik Osmem Hey. I apologize. I actually just sent it out a few moments ago. I forgot to send it out last night. So we are picking up Osmem Hey. So the Rebbe says, Shabbos, say continuing on the topic of Tshuva. The Rebbe is really introducing here an incredibly powerful Yisod. As hopefully as you've seen, it's page Kuf Beis, if you're following along in this, uh, in this edition, or page Kuf Beis on the PDF, as hopefully you've seen that the Rebbe is really introducing some incredibly powerful and important cathartic life ideas in the process of tshuva, in the process of change, in the process of self-development. So let's begin today with the Hakdoma, with the introduction to this Sif, which again, page Kuf Beis, the right-hand column, where you see in the Be'uri HaChasidos, paragraph Mem Hey. So the Rebbe writes as follows, the Be'uri HaChasidos writes as follows, Li'el Nizbayer, Shegam Kisha Adam Nimtza Bematzav Noash. So in the earlier Seifim, in Mem Dalid, Mem Gimel, so we've been speaking about this notion that sometimes a person finds themselves in a state of Yeosh, right? A state of Yeosh, a state of despair, where a person really has given up hope on themselves, on life. Becholzos, Yesh lo yes hayecholes la ore rachamei shamayim. So it's nevertheless, as we again we saw this really very acutely in in in, in Os Mendalid, this idea that sometimes I could have a Yitzhahara of my own creation that is so powerful, that is so overwhelming, that I lack the capacity and the tools to be able to go ahead and actively fight it. So right, so right the Bura Hasidos that sometimes a person could go ahead and be so in such a state of despair that they give up on themselves. But he says, even in those moments, a person has the ability to awaken divine compassion. So the wording over here is very interesting. That a person has the ability to awaken within himself divine compassion and that the Ribbono Shal Olam will give him a renewed sense of koach, a renewed sense of strength, a renewed sense of strength so as to be able to rebuild himself. And again, me'ayin liyesh. Ultimately, again, remember we'll say that if that term sounds familiar, it's because it's the term that we use, of course, in Bereshis, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, yesh me'ayin. He created the world something from nothing. So right, Seb Tzadik, sometimes the whole yisod in life is to rebuild yourself me'ayin liyesh, from nothing to something. What a profound idea. So the Ribbon Shalom created the world from nothing, right, for something from nothing. Sometimes I have to create for myself nothing from something, right? Ayin liyesh, I have to make myself from a nothing to a something. Hein le'inyan mi shashar shorah, both say sometimes again this could be, and, and we'll define all of these concepts in greater depth. But sometimes the Rebbe says it's someone who's shor shora. The Rebbe said this wording is very interesting. Shor shora literally means a person's essence is decayed. Some, sometimes again, sometimes I struggle with a particular midah, sometimes a particular attribute, the character trait, and sometimes. I, there's just inner decay, there's spiritual decay, there's personalistic decay that has taken effect. He goes on, and I have the ability to go ahead and make myself a new shoresh, to make myself a new essence. Now the Rebbe says, I could accomplish that through koach ha through prayer. So the truth is, he alludes to the fact, we spoke about that in Oslam we're going to loop back to that again in this sif as well. And sometimes again, just my heart, and my mind are closed off. But I say sometimes a person is just shut down. It happens in life where we just we just emotionally shut down. I'm, 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 I'm unavailable. I'm not connecting. I'm not feeling. He goes on. And I say sometimes even if I'm spiritually cut off or spiritually dead, and ultimately, again, I'm, or, or emotionally cut off, that a person has the ability to go ahead and create a divine revelation in himself. Again, you keep seeing the same, same phrase. May I go from a nothing 
to a something. And how do I do that? Sometimes by contemplation, contemplation ultimately again of the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Here he's just reviewing some of the concepts we spoke about in some of the earlier Sifim. Kain Yispar, She'efshar li Adam lifal b'koach habitol ke'en. Es habriya she'al yadok tikabal teshuvaso yesh me'ayin. So we'll say here in this Sif, we're going to speak about something incredibly dramatic, which is the idea that sometimes a person hits a point in life. You know, I both say, we've seen this before in Rav and the truth is this is a concept that applies in many of the Svarim, which is this notion that sometimes I'm in, in such a state of disrepair that it's not a question of repairing something, right? It's not a question of fixing something, but it's a question of just starting again. I, 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 I have to hit the reset button. Sometimes there are just too many things that are broken. There are just too many things that are not in the right derech, that it's not just a tweak here, a tweak there, but I mamish need to hit the reset button. That says the tzaddik is what we're going to speak about in this particular os. Kan, if you look, listen to these words. Kan yisbayer she'ef shar adam lif al bekoach habitol ke'ayin or ke'ayin es habriya she'al yodah tekabal teshuvaso yesh me'ayin. They will say there is a form of tshuva that gives me the ability to start new. Literally a brand new bria. Brand new creation. Just like Kodesh Baruch created the world, yesh me'ayin, something from nothing, so too sometimes I have the ability and sometimes there is the necessity to recreate myself, yesh me'ayin, something from nothing as well. We'll say it's an incredible yesod. Sometimes all I need to do is tweak a couple of things about my personality. I need to work on this midah, I need to work on that midah, I need to fine tune this, and sometimes I just need a brand new creation. I just need a brand new creation. I need a yesh me'ayin. I need to create something from nothing. Then I will say, here's what's interesting. Now, in order to recreate yourself yesh me'ayin, the first step in that is what is very interesting. The first step in personalistic yesh me'ayin creation is making yourself into an ayin, making yourself into a nothing. Now, that sounds very harsh. It doesn't chas sholem mean like what it says about making yourself into a nothing because I will say, remember again, so much of Hasidus is built on this idea of what we'll call positive self-negation. Now, I know that that sounds like an inherently contradictory phrase, but there is a way, there is a way to minimize yourself, to humble yourself, to make yourself into the quote-unquote nothing, but not lose your sense of self, not feel like a nothing. Sometimes I have to make myself into a nothing, but not feel like a nothing. So this is an incredible yisod. So there is this dynamic of tshuva, there's this dynamic of tshuva, whereas I have the ability to recreate myself, yesh me'ayin, I can literally recreate myself something from nothing, but in order to do that, I have to make myself a nothing. I have to make myself an ayin. I have to restart, I have to recreate. It's an incredible, again, this, this is exactly what we're going to discuss. So look at it. Kain yispar she'afshah la'adam lifal b'kach habitol ke'ayin. So we'll say, here we're going to learn in this sif that I can make myself into a nothing. Oh, why do I want to make myself into a nothing? Because again, es habriya she'al yada te'kabal teshuvah yesh me'ayin. Because sometimes what I want to do is if I really want to restart, I want to make myself into a nothing. I want to make myself into an ayin so that I can recreate myself yesh me ayin, something from nothing. And we're going to see the power of this form of tshuva, yesh me ayin tshuva, making yourself into a nothing and then recreating yourself in totality is the most powerful form of tshuva because it works even in situations where I feel that my sin is so severe that it should not warrant, it should not warrant recreation. I will say, I just tell you, Rabbi Salavichi Kanans, there's an incredible medrash in Bereshit. The medrash writes that the Rebun Shalom created hundreds of thousands of worlds before ours. Hundreds of thousands of worlds before ours. And each one he created, he didn't like, so he started again. So Rabbi Salavichi says, I, I don't understand, what, what, what does that mean? And I will say, I could work on something and I don't like the way it came out, so I'll start again. Or I don't like this, I'll start again. But the Rebun Shalom is the master artisan. 
So what does it mean that he started on something and then it didn't work? So the Rav says so beautifully that the Riban Shalom was trying to model for us something incredibly important, that no one makes the right world on the first try. <laughs> Meaning the Riban Shalom, of course, could have made the right world on the first try, but he chose not to. In order to show us when we create our worlds, and ultimately when we create ourselves, you never get it right, try one. You try again, you try again. In the Ribbon Shalom's case, it was hundreds of thousands of times until, quote unquote, he, quote unquote, got it right. Do you understand? Of course, the Ribbon Shalom could have gotten it right the first time he chose not to, to model for us this episode. So the Tzaddik says is that sometimes I deconstruct myself in such a profoundly dramatic way that I have no choice but to restart. There are different forms of restarting. So remember again, Rab Tzadir Bosa, the beauty of that paragraph is it kind of gave us a review of the last number of Sifim because there are different forms of restarting and there are different levels of severity of restarting because sometimes I don't have to rebuild myself, Yeshim Ayin. Sometimes I just have to tweak something. Sometimes I just have to modify something. Sometimes I just have to address something. Not everything always needs a deconstruction and reconstruction of the self. But sometimes what I have done is so severe and sometimes what I have done is so detrimental and what I have done is so deconstructive that it's not a shayla of tweaking, but it's a shayla of mamish recreating. No matter how terrible the sin may be, the tzaddik says, if we make our, find a way to make ourselves into an ayin, into a nothing, then ultimately again, I could go ahead and recreate myself yesh ayin. What that shuvah looks like and how it actually unfolds in Mir Hashem, we will continue with tomorrow. Shkarech Abbasayim.